Welcome back to another episode of the Dungeons Risk Game series, the indie game I've been working on for the past six months in my spare time. In the last episode, I added the abandoned stage, the mage enemy, and elite variant enemies, and just a little bit of polish to wrap up that video. If you haven't seen that video yet, you should because I told you to. Matter of fact, you should just watch the entire series to see the progress so far to get yourself caught up on this whole thing uh link in the description and it might even be at the end of the video i don't know yet to kick things off here i start by using my professional art skills to massacre the sprite for the skeleton mage to make it unique and usable for the boss that i'm going to be making after that i actually got to work on making the boss i started off with the skeleton archer base and the script and then I made animations for the attack since I think using the animation player for things like attacking and stuff would just be better than programming all the movements with tweens and stuff. I didn't exactly have a plan going into making the animations, so I just started making random animations that I thought would work for attacks and seemed to work out fine for me in the end. After I made the first couple of animations, I just fine-tuned them a little bit, and then I just started making other attacks as needed. The boss has four states he could be in. Uh, those are calling in backup, calling in spear airstrike attack things, doing a magic blast attack, and then chasing down the player and bashing them over the noggin with a spear. And with the attack animations being completed and stitched together with nothing but a whole lot of hope and duct tape, the base of the boss is finished. I'm going to call it the Mage Overlord, but that name is subject to change, and it is our first boss for this game. What's that I hear you saying? How does the boss work? Thank you for asking! I made a super sophisticated script that analyzes the player movements and then does the boss attacks uh, according to what playstyle the player's using, what character they're using, and uh, how strong they are for the fight to make a truly challenging fight. I use a random number generator to choose which attacks are used. I create an array with the attack animations I made, and then I use a random number to just select one of the attacks in the list, and then toss into the animation play. And once that attack animation is finished, the script just repeats the process, so effectively it's just an infinite loop of it attacking. I also implement a feature so that if the attack animation has already been done the previous attack, it'll just say, hey, that attack is stupid, don't do that, uh, do this one instead, and it'll just keep looping until it gets a different animation. Also, the attack speed increases by 0.03% every time the boss attacks. So, if you take too long, it'll only get worse for you. And all of this is spread out across five different animation player nodes. <laughs> because that was somehow the simplest way I could get it to work. I would love for it to be clear that I am open for suggestions. Also, at some point along the lines, I ended up installing a plugin that makes color picking in the script easier since I'm a complete nonce when it comes to color values in script for some reason. Now, to take a break from all that stuff, I went and polished up some of the attack animations for the player characters that we have so far. Firstly, I started with the archer character and made it so he has two arms now, and he does a quick little movement of grabbing an arrow and slapping that bad boy into the bow before launching it at subsonic speeds towards the nearest walking pile of bones. I also did the same deal with the burst fire, just made the animation speed up a little when you do the burst fire. I couldn't really do anything to the knight since she already kinda has her hands occupied, but maybe you guys could recommend something since I kinda have the creativity of a cinder block. I kinda doubt I'll get anything from you fellas in the comments since the last time I asked for help in the comments I got absolutely nothing. Next up on the list was the mage character, and I made a nice little swing animation for his wand for whenever you choose a spot to attack, and it even spawns particles when he does attack now. I also gave the man his book because I somehow forgot to give it to him even though it's on the character select menu that I made before the actual playable character. After that, I just went back to make sure I had uh, all the same types of animations for the enemies, which was a slight ass pain, but I eventually got all the firing animations for the archer enemies, alongside a slight weapon redesign for the elite variant of the archer enemy. 
I also got the wand animation for the mage enemies, and doing that was easier than dealing with the enemy archer animations. And after doing all that, I think it has made the game just a little more polished, since things moving around on the screen means things are good, right? After dealing with all the animation stuff and all the animation players, I was about sick of them. So I figured it was about time to rework the HUD skill bar system since it was only made for the knight character before there were any other characters and that was haphazardly put together to work with the other characters. And it was put together with just an animation player node. After already dealing with all the animation stuff in the first half of this video, I happily gutted the animation player from the HUD scene. To start things off, I renamed the progress bar node and then the text for it to something that would be less specific towards the knight playable character, and I just changed them to the skill bars and skill text. And then after that, I just replaced what was the animation player with just a tween and a little bit of lines of code to uh, polish it up a little bit. And with that addition, I can finally have separate cooldown times for the different character skills since before it was basically locked up 5 seconds because I was smoking crack or something when I made the cooldown bar before and only made it so it could be a 5 second cooldown. I also went back and did the same thing for the health bar and the XP bars making them just a little bit nicer now that they move and it's not just super jittery. And that was a lot easier than dealing with the stupid skill bar. It was just add a tween instead of just directly assigning the variable. And with that, I'm going to close this video off here. Got some progress done and I'm hoping to get controller and mobile support and all the main levels ready in the next couple of episodes here. Since I'm planning on releasing a game demo or a public test or something along those lines in the relatively near future. Depending on how fast the development is going, it might slow down a little more uh, since it's a personal project I'm doing and I want to prioritize school and my job before my silly little computer games. But for now, have a good one. I'm out of here. After all that, fucking Apple Watch.